No, 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 that's wrong. Dixie Diamonds, 96. Cooktown, 541. After breaking away from Ziz's telepathic reception of Brency's five senses, Baloney said to Karen and Paul, Well, of our two major worries concerning the destruction of my radio transmitter, I can say with certainty that you managed to destroy it, Paul, leaving us with the important but not terribly urgent question concerning my possible radioactivity. Not urgent, Karen asked, voice filled with concern. We still don't know if radioactivity can damage you, Big B, which makes your continuing possible radiation exposure both extremely urgent and important. I stand, Balloonie replied, or should that be float? Correct it. I feel fine, and though I have a very vivid recollection of how painful Paul's stand-in for John Henry with his hammer blow was, I seem none the worse for wear. I'm sorry, Paul asked. Stand in for John who? Ha <laughs> sorry, Balooney said with a laugh. More of Brency's American television viewing. There's a film called Tall Tale that includes the story of John Henry that tells the tale of a former slave down in the U.S. Dixie Confederacy. This particular story takes place soon after the United States' 1860s Civil War and revolves around laying railroad tracks. Seems he was so skilled and quick at swinging his pick to make holes where dynamite was placed that he was challenged to a contest with the steam-powered machine. A contest where John Henry prevailed. Prevail. Verb, past tense, prevail. Prove more powerful than opposing forces. Be victorious. The accuracy of the story is lost, but John Henry became legendary in the real use of the word. Sadly, things didn't end well for John Henry. The story reveals that as a result of the effort required to defeat that machine, he died. And though he earned undying accolades from his peers, the freed African-American slaves continued to be treated abysmally. Just prior to my escape, Brency was watching a news story about Disney producing a short cartoon movie that's due out next month that features our African-American folk hero. We have more than just stories. There's also a song, as he said before singing... John Henry was a steel-driving man. John Henry was a steel-driving man. He died in West Virginia with his hammer in his hand. They sing about him all across the land. John Henry was a steel-driving man. He beat the steam drill down, and then he died. He beat the steam drill down, and then he died. And it didn't change nothing, but heaven knows he tried. He was buried with his hammer by his side. He beat the steam drill down, and then he died. John Henry. Returning to his speaking voice, Balloonia added, None of which is nearly as important as my discovery that Brency is heading literally to your address, has plans to force you to tell him my whereabouts, and is due there tonight at 8.29. So you two need to be elsewhere long before then. May I suggest that you exit immediately, and that after I reassure Joe that we haven't forgotten her and are working on a plan to set her free, that we confer with the others? Brency's coming for us, eh? Paul asked, turning his head towards Karen, who shrugged her shoulders while flipping her palm skyward. Well then, please reassure Joe, and then let's confer. Balloonie, Karen asked, before you speak to Joe, and we have a confab, I want to know how you are, where you are, and what are your plans? I seem to be fine, Balloonie replied. I'm drifting out at sea with plans of hiding in the waves a bit. As I said, I don't believe I'm radioactive, but just in case I am... Floating among the waves should lessen any possible chance of me contaminating anyone. Now, Z continued in a commanding voice, the sooner you leave the library, the sooner I can pop into Joe, and then we can discuss plans as a group after. Acceptable. Completely, Karen said, nodding her head slowly. John Henry was a steel-driving man. Songwriter, Steve Earle.